In this video, we're going to have a look at the develop module and specifically the details panel. For the purposes, let's choose that image and then we click across to the develop module. So what we have, we've got a wildebeest image, which from here at full view looks pretty clean. It doesn't look very noisy and sharpness from here doesn't really bother us. It's when we zoom in close that you start seeing these blotchy areas. You can see red, green and blue dots and also it looks almost grainy. That is digital noise and that starts showing up in your images at higher ISO levels. So let's have a look into the detail panel. You've got sharpening, a set of sliders and noise reduction and another set of sliders. The area here I have on top here is a closer view. You can set this to view the whole image by right clicking or you can go for a nice tight zoom which gives you a 2 to 1 ratio. I keep it at 1 to 1 for now so let's see what we can do. I'm going to keep it over there. I prefer to zoom in the whole screen so I can see exactly what's happening and as you'll notice compare the bright area here with the dark area. Noise normally shows up in the dark areas of an image where the lighter areas will not be as much affected. So let's start with noise reduction. There's two different kinds. Luminance noise reduction refers to the graininess. It's also called monochromatic noise. This is not the color blotches that you see on this wildebeest here. It is the graininess thereof. I will start with the color though. I'm going to take this color slider and slowly slide it up until you can see it's left with the blotchiness. The graininess is still there, but the color is out. Have a look again. I'll bring it back. See there's a bit of color here and we take it away by taking the slider up. So I've got this graininess left. From there, once I'm happy with that, I can go up to the luminance noise reduction. Remember that's monochromatic, so it's not involving color. It is just looking at the graininess thereof. And let's slide that up and see what happens. So have a look at that wildebeest now. I'm overdoing it a bit just to get the visual of it. You can see this is much, much smoother than we started with. So you've now reduced the noise out of it. But keep in mind, the more luminance noise reduction you do, you can affect the sharpness of an image negatively as well. You can make that image softer. So let's have a look. I've done luminance noise reduction and color noise reduction. Let's switch that off. Remember, you can use this little switch here to turn the effects off. That was before and that's after. So you see, much, much smoother image. Now, let's zoom back out. You see again, from this, from this zoom level, you can't really see the difference. But if you're going to be posting onto the web or you're going to do printing and stuff, you want to try and get it as noise free as possible. Remember though, in the old days, we shot for grain. You wanted grainy images. So there is no right or wrong. Now, let's pick up on the sharpening side of things. I'm going to open this to the whole image. Sharpening here, amount. Again, think of amount as the volume or the, the amount of sharpening you're going to do. Turning the volume up. So, if I take this all the way up just for us to see the result, have a look at this area around the bright parts on this wildebeest. So that is zero sharpening and that is a lot of sharpening. You see it, it almost becomes a bit much. That's why we need to err on the side of caution here. So let's start round about there. Right, what sharpening does is if you have a line such as this one at the top here, the dark side gets made a little bit darker and the pixels on the white side gets made a little bit whiter. So it increases contrast along the edges of an image. Now to zoom out, I've now added a little bit of sharpening, but as it stands, the entire image, the global thing will be sharpened. Not ideal because I don't want sharpening done in the smooth areas, for example, in the sky or in this dusty area. How we deal with that, we come down to masking. Now you click on masking and at the same time you hold the alt key in, which turns it to white. Now let me go again. White areas, when I click alt, are the areas that's going to be sharpened when we apply the sharpening. Now, holding Alt, I slide the slider over to the right hand side and you'll see we get some black creeping in. Now the black areas are not sharpened, the white areas are being sharpened. So compare the whole image being sharpened to just those areas being sharpened. This is ideal now because now I'm sharpening on the edges and that's what I want to pop in my image. Right, again, you're not going to see the result up here from the big image. That's why we recommend that you zoom in. Right, let's have a look if we turn all of this off. You see, I've got my noise reduction done. Watch the horn area now when I bring this back. And you can get a bit of sharpening in there as well. Let me overdo that for you so you can see it in there. Right, we're going to jump to another image just to have a look at radius and detail. So, let's click back to library. 
let's select which one do we choose let's choose the baboon image because there's lots of fur in we can use and back to develop so very quickly again let's sharpen and remove these two back to normal let's sharpen up to a certain level let's look nice and close on this baboon's face I'm gonna mask it out remember hold alt to see the white areas and over there so I want that for now right now what radius and detail will do this is a little bit close on the zoom so I'm gonna back it up a touch over there right what radius and detail will do if you have an animal or a human with hair showing in your image detail will make that hair or the fur pop out a little so you can push this up you can use you can use um, a, a closer zoom than that because from this image you will see a result but the closer zoom gives you better result have a look at the fur area around the neck of this baboon you take it down it's sharp because I've done a bit of sharpening but if I push this all the way up you can see the fur pops a little bit more very handy for animals like this or for lions something similar radius affects as with the amount of sharpening radius affects the bigger picture if you have lots of fine detail in your image you don't want to push radius up too high it's going to start giving you a too harsh look of the actual fur if we just zoom in let's have a look here on this image around the face so look this area you see here now is the area above the eye these hair start looking a little bit too much so i would back off on radius if you have a plain and simple image like a landscape with a mountain and a single tree you can be more aggressive on the radius and then detail will come down because there's not much fine detail to play with so a combination of amount radius detail and masking is how you deal with your sharpening and then the noise reduction luminance is for the monochromatic noise color removes those color blotches from the image zoomed up tight detail sharpening noise reduction this is something you generally do right at the end of your workflow once you've done everything else but make sure to remember it at the end very important part of the digital workflow